Hi, this is Usha. Welcome to Rathod's Highest Classes. Today in this lecture, we are going to see current affairs of 25th April 2022. So let's get started with our discussion and let us try to see today's quote. So today's quote is given by Nelson Mandela. He says that real leaders must be ready to sacrifice all for the freedom of their people. So here this quote which is mainly talking about freedom of people. So actually you know that right to freedom it is one of fundamental right in India. So let me know which article talks about right to freedom. Okay. So here if you want to write any question, any answer or any quote regarding freedom you can use this quote of Nelson Mandela. So you can write that real leaders must be ready to sacrifice all for the freedom of people by Nelson Mandela. So now let us try to see first topic it is regarding India UK relations. Title says side stepping irritants. So the central theme of this article says that India and the UK chose to keep the big picture in mind and work on long term goals. So here we need to know about recent developments between India and the UK and here you need to know about what are the irritants or what are the concerns between these two that is India and UK. So that will be important and this article is important from your GS paper to under international relations and this article is important from your mains and from prelims you have to see the geography that is uh, regarding map. So map based question is possible from this UK point of view, nearby water bodies. So I will uh, suggest you people to open the atlas and you have to see where is this UK exactly located and which countries are part of this uh, UK and you have to know which are the water bodies which is present and where is this English channel is located. So you have to see all these things which are important from your map based questions point of view from your prelims. So now let us try to see this article in a very great detail. So why? Why this India UK relations is in news? So because, because British, British Prime Minister was in Delhi last week. And we came up with recent developments in this meeting. And we mainly focus on commitment with India. Okay, so Britain, British which mainly had some commitments with India in some sectors like trade defense climate change and as well as cyber securities so in these areas we are mainly enhancing our cooperation with this uk okay so now let us try to see what are those recent developments so if you see recent developments as you all know because of this ongoing russia ukraine crisis so this russia ukraine crisis uh, somewhat upward trajectory and now in this event also we came up with increasing of our bilateral relations and we came up with this comprehensive strategic partnership okay so we came up with this comprehensive strategic partnership in 2021 and we also came with agreement regarding this 2030 roadmap for india uk relations so regarding this india uk relations we also came up with 2030 roadmap and this roadmap which mainly focuses on bilateral relationship between India and UK and even recent UK's foreign ministry or foreign secretary in her recent visit so we mainly focused on Russian aggression and we also focused on how to reduce this global status of dependence on the country okay because here many of these European countries dependent on this Russia for their energy so because of this Russia Ukraine crisis that led to decreasing of exports of russian gas and as well as oil such that here these are the countries which are mainly searching for alternatives it is mainly affecting this energy security of these european countries so apart from that they also have talks regarding defense related trade and even deepening of cyber security defense cooperation between india and the uk and recently we also came with a joint cyber security program Okay, and it is mainly focusing to protect online infrastructure in India and as well as in UK. And even India UK also plan to hold first strategic technological dialogue. Okay, and it is mainly focusing on 
emerging technologies between India and UK. And even India and UK, they also agreed to strengthen their cooperation in maritime domain as well. So in this context, we need to talk about this Indo-Pacific region. So many of these Western countries now, they are focusing on this Indo-Pacific region. So UK is also one of the country which is mainly focusing on this Indo-Pacific region. Okay, and you all know that India it is a major role player in this Indo-Pacific region. So because of this, many countries they started focusing on this Indo-Pacific region because there is a shifting of power from west towards east, which is mainly seen. So in January 2022, India and UK they managed to conclude first round of talks for an India-UK free trade agreement as well. We are going to have this India-UK free trade agreement that will be concluded by the end of this year. So if you are talking about what are the major irritants. So actually you know that India before got independence it was a British colony. So because of colonial prism. So India's post colonial engagement with Britain. So we are, we are having some multiple contradictions between India and UK. So because of this UK's role which is unacceptable. Okay. And next one is even because of this colonial okay colonial prism. So the consequence of partition and as well as cold war which also made harder between the two countries to have smooth relations. And if you are talking about next important concern here is Pakistan's angle. Pakistan also has been one of the major obstacle in the bilateral relations of India with Britain. So India with Britain we are having one obstacle that is Pakistan also because British's advocacy of Pakistan which has been a matter of concern for India always. Okay and next one is Britain's domestic politics. So the domestic uh, dynamics of Britain also have tend to have some uh, bad relationship between India and UK. Okay so here for example if you are talking about Labour Party. So Labour Party was empathetic to India while conservative party was not okay so because of this there is also some cause of concern between india and uk relations so now let us try to see next topic it is regarding addressing this content so this article which is mainly talking about recent developmental products in jammu and kashmir so if you are following the news daily okay if you have saw the yesterday's news headlines so our prime minister he mainly inaugurated some developmental projects infrastructure projects even solar power project in jammu and kashmir so this article is mainly talking about the projects in jammu and kashmir that will be benefiting union territory but they are not enough to reverse discontent so for reversing of discontent the statehood should be given to this jammu and kashmir so this is some just so now let us try to talk about this topic in a very great detail so this article is important from your governance point of view which mainly comes under GS paper 2 and this topic is important from your mains. So now let us try to see this topic. So here what happened so recently our prime minister he came up with inaugurating of number of developmental projects and infrastructure project and as well as connectivity projects and solar power project in Jammu and Kashmir. So these are the some important steps you are taken by government that will be helpful for addressing some issues which are mainly facing by residents of Jammu and Kashmir. Okay, after revoking of the special category status of this Jammu and Kashmir that happened on August 5th, 6th. August 5th, 6th of 2019, our government came up with one landmark, landmark change that is revocation of Article 370 of Indian Constitution which mainly talks about special category status for Jammu and Kashmir. So after this revocation, so our central government which mainly coming up with number of products, developmental products in this Jammu and Kashmir. Okay, they are mainly focusing on increasing of connectivity, right? And we and government is also increasing of in focusing on increasing of more investments in this Jammu and Kashmir. So they are also focusing for boosting of tourism in this area as well. Okay, and as you all know, this Jammu and Kashmir was a conflict ridden, okay, for decades. And now we are seeing there are some several better indicators that are mainly seen in this uh, Jammu and Kashmir. But if you are talking about state GDP, it is like a very, very less compared to the rest of the states in India. So if you are talking about investment proposals, developmental projects, they are mainly inaugurated by our Prime Minister 
and we also came up with a number of connectivity projects between Jammu and Srinagar here and Jammu and Delhi. So this will be helpful for picking up of this Jammu and Kashmir's economy now. So as we all know now we went for a harsh period of lockdown due to this global pandemic and there are some communication restrictions because of revocation of this article 370 there is shutdown of uh, internet in this Jammu and Kashmir. So and now what happened now this Kashmir valley which has been seeing some substantial increase in the food falls and is also uh, seeing some good signs of revival of tourism industry and there is attracting of tourists from the different countries because of natural beauty of this Kashmir valley here. Yeah. So now, now here one important problem that mainly arises here is so there are many political parties for example Gupkar Alliance which is mainly demanding for restoring of the statehood. So author mainly says that even though when we are going for number of investments in this Jammu and Kashmir, number of developmental projects, so here the statehood, okay, restoring of statehood for this Jammu and Kashmir, it is a one of the good beginning. So this is about this topic. And now let us try to talk about next topic, it is regarding polio. So title says that floundering polio eradication. So we are mainly focusing on polio eradication. But now there is a spreading of polio that is mainly seen. So it is a one of cause of concern. So what is this polio? Polio it is a disease which mainly caused by polio virus. Okay. And in this, uh, in this disease, especially the nervous system will be got affected. As you all know, unlike the other cells, if any nerve cell which is mainly affected means it will be not regenerated. So this is one problem with nervous system. So whenever this virus which is mainly attacking this nervous system means it will be having the permanent effect that is seen in that so and so affected child. So there will be like so that child will not be able to walk, able to think, the cognitive disabilities will be arising. So this is some signs and symptoms of this uh, polio. So if you are talking about this article which is mainly talking about C V D P okay C D V P. So we have to know what is a C V D P. So it is nothing but virus derived polio virus. It is nothing but C means circulating. Circulating virus derived polio virus. So as you all know, there will be number of polio camps will be conducted on Sundays, especially right especially this polio vaccine will be given to children who are below five years of age so what is the cause of cancer now so in this vaccine so vaccine means nothing but it will be having a weak virus strain will be given right so weak virus strain will be there so what happened whenever we are storing this weak virus strain in this vaccines so after some time it is mainly undergoing some mutations so because of this mutation so this weak strain which is becoming strong okay which which is mainly becoming strong and it is having increased efficiency okay and because of this strong virus now it is causing polio okay now it is causing polio so what is the use of this vaccine mainly to prevent this polio and to develop immunity for this polio but instead this weak polio strain which is mainly becoming strong due to mutations and it is having now capability to cause this polio so this is called as circulating virus uh, circulating vaccine derived polio virus right so now let us try to understand this topic in a very great detail and this topic is important from your science and technology and this mainly comes under your gs paper 3 so now let us try to see this topic in a very great detail so we are talking about this article which is mainly talking about polio eradication so why does polio is in news now so the recent news of wild polio virus type 1 in malwai okay in malwai in pakistan and we also see there is a polio outbreak in israel as well so here what is the cause for this outbreak of polio in pakistan and israel that is because of this circulating vaccine derived polio virus type 3 so because of uh, whenever this vaccine which is causing this polio means so it will be like a bad sign okay bad sign for what we are mainly focusing on preventing of uh, this polio but it is mainly leading to increasing of this polio right so if you are talking about what is this uh, circulating vaccine derived polio virus so as you all know in this oral polio vaccine will be having a weak strain of this polio virus but it will be going undergoing some mutations and it is mainly becoming becoming strong and such that it will be having now capability to cause this wild polio 
right so this is called as circulating vaccine derived polio virus so if you are talking about eradication of this polio so we have a target so we have this target and this program launched in year 1988 so at that time the target year was 22000 so by 2000 year they we need to go for eradication of this polio okay so at that time who that is world health organization came up with a task and it mainly assigned by anonymous resolution in this world health assembly and as well as forum of ministries of health and health of all the nations so it came it mainly came with a resolution that is rotary international so this rotary international came up with this polio press a project in 1985 and this and under this project they mainly focused on providing of this polio vaccines to children who are below this 5 years of age of all developing countries before this 2005 so out of the six who regions uh, were america europe and as well as western pacific and they attained this target of eradication of polio by 2000 but other countries are there for example southern arc okay like africa eastern uh, mediterranean region southeast asian region and these target had been not achieved here and they in they mainly revised this target by 2026 and we have to see whether by 2026 there will be eradication of this polio in this southern arc or not so this is about this topic and now let's try to see next topic this topic which is mainly talking about arunachal pradesh assa border dispute so title says towards a resolution of the arunachal assa border dispute so this article is important from your gs paper 3 under security so especially in the northeastern states like assam nagaland mizoram meghalaya arunachal pradesh they are mainly facing this border dispute okay so you have to know about what is this border dispute so if you see what is the context so recently there was one development in this assam uh, and as well as arunachal border dispute here so less than a month union government gave a seal of approval of an agreement to partially to partially resolve this dispute sectors of assam meghalaya border arunachal pradesh so what happened so here mainly union government said that we need to resolve this issue of issue of assam and arunachal pradesh border issue okay and this because of this chief minister of arunachal pradesh and as well as chief minister of assam they mainly decided to come up with the district level committees and this district level committees they are mainly going to see the issues and they will be coming up with this uh, dis resolving of this interstate boundary disputes so if you are talking about arunachal and assam border dispute so if you see some facts assam mainly shares 804.10 kilometer interstate boundary with arunachal pradesh so with arunachal pradesh assam which mainly shares 804.10 kilometers of interstate boundary and the state of arunachal pradesh which mainly created in 1987 and it mainly claims that some land that ter traditionally belongs to its residents had been given to assam so during this uh, creation of this arunachal pradesh okay the state of arunachal pradesh which mainly claims that some area which mainly belongs to this arunachal pradesh had given to assam and the three party committee which had recommended that certain territories had transferred to assam to arunachal pradesh okay and because of that two states are battling battling regarding this border issues okay so now let us try to see some more important details now let us talk about what are the functions of this district committees so if you're focusing on what this district committees will do so this district committees mainly undertake some joint service in these dispute areas and they will try to find some tangible solutions to this long pending issues and they will be come with solutions based on historical perspective and ethnicity and contiguity okay etc because most of these northeastern states are inhabited by these tribal peoples okay right so because of this we need to also take into consideration their ethnicity as well and now let us try to see why do interstate border dispute they remain unresolved especially in this northeastern states so the first here important thing that you need to remember is linguistic idea of reorganization so although the states reorganization commission of 1956 which was mainly based on administrative convenience so states mainly reorganized largely based on the one language theory 
So here you need to refer. So what are the different commissions they are present regarding this, uh, regarding this uh, carvation of the states? Okay. So you have to make a note of that as well. So if you are talking about the second important thing here is regional complexity. So here the other complexity or other concern here is regional complexity because in these areas there are difficult terrain will be there. For example, rivers will be there, hills, forests. Okay, they are mainly present. So because of this, we can't go for physical demarcation in this rugged terrain, right? And next one is indigenous communities. They were the they were mainly present in this northeastern states. So indigenous communities they were the most part left alone. So the boundaries would be drawn for administrative con administrative convenience when need arose. Okay. So here in this 1956 commission which does not resolve some discrepancies, okay, some disturbances. So when new states they are mainly carved out of Assam, for example, Nagaland, Mizoram, Meghalaya, Tripura, Manipur, and Arunachal Pradesh, they are still not at risk. So these are some important reasons. So now let us try to see next topic. It is regarding household consumer spending survey. So title says that after the hiatus, actually we came up with the survey in 2017 to 18, but the results are not been, not been released, okay, or published. So now we are going to have this household consumer spending survey that will be started in July, okay. So because of this, this is the news and you have to refer this article. So you need to know what is the significance of this survey. So if you know the significance, then you can appreciate, yes, we have to do this survey. So this article is important from your GS paper 3 under economy. So if you're talking about context, it mainly says that all India household consumer expenditure survey, this is mainly conducted by National Statistical Office. So you can get a prelims question like, so all India household consumer expenditure survey, which is done by which of the following organization and they will be giving example, uh, Options like RBI, World Bank, NSO, okay, Central uh, Ministry, Union, uh, Union, uh, Union Finance Ministry. So like this, you will be giving options. So you have to choose the correct option. So here, All India Household Consumer Expenditure Survey, which is mainly done by National Statistical Office, and it will be done every five years. So this might be also a prelim statement. So now let us try to see some details in this infographic. So this infographic I directly took from Hindu, okay. So all India households consumer expenditure survey will be conducted between July 2012 and June 2023. So by this time period, so we are going to conduct this all India household consumer expenditure survey. So what is the survey which mainly talks about? So this survey which is mainly carried once in every five years. So this survey will mainly helps to have the information regarding poverty levels and how consumption patterns which mainly change it, okay? And this will be helpful for GDP calculation as well. So if you're talking about why it is a very big deal. So last survey, those findings, they were made public and this survey was conducted in 2011 to 2012. And later on, we also came up in year 2017 to 18, but the results have not been published. So now let us try to see some important facts here. So if you're talking about scope of this survey here is, it mainly collects information on consumption spending patterns of households across the country. And this survey will be conducted both in urban areas and as well as in rural areas. So what is the information that is generated here? So this survey which mainly reveals average expenditure on goods, for example, so how in household, which mainly spending on food and as well as non-food services and it will be also helpful to generate estimates of household monthly per capita consumer expenditure and it is also helpful for distribution of households and as well as persons okay how much they are spending and if you're talking about significance if you're talking about significance in the terms of general so it will be helpful for calculating dynamics okay demand dynamics how demand is there in the market and it will be also helpful for shifting priorities so how people how they used to spend earlier and now they are spending so whether there is any change in the terms in the baskets of goods and services okay or not so this will be very much helpful for the producer to change whatever the items they are producing now so it will be also helpful to access the living standards of people and we can also know about the growth trends so if we're talking about so how it is helpful for this policy makers so this survey which is mainly providing some tools 
that will be helpful for policy planning okay so what are the changes that can be come up in the interventions policies etc and it will be helpful to address even the structural anomalies okay structural difficulties that are present and that will be helpful for socio economic development of our country and this will be also helpful for rebase our gross domestic product and even other macro economic indicators as well so this is about this topic and now let us try to see next topic it is regarding debt crisis so debt crisis of which country that is sri lanka so already you know that economic crisis of sri lanka and sri lanka which is mainly approaching imf to get some funds and to get some help and even not only imf but also india which is mainly coming up with some help and humanitarian assistance for this sri lanka right so here this article is important from your gs paper to international relations and even from gs paper 3 under economy as well so now let us try to see what is this article talking about so imf has promised to support for this sri lanka and it is mainly supporting to mitigate current economic crisis which is mainly facing by sri lanka so this is the thing which mainly announced by finance minister of sri lanka so if you see some details it mainly says that sri lanka which is mainly facing economic turmoil economic crisis severe economic crisis so this crisis which is mainly because of lack of foreign currency so whenever there is no foreign currency means if you are importing any product from other countries we need to pay in foreign reserves or foreign currency so if you do not have foreign currency means how can you repay right so if you are not having money you are not going to import so whenever you are not going to import means so what are the essentials that you are getting from other countries that will be stalled so because of this the people who are present in that country they will be having some issues okay for example they will be having shortage issues for example they will be having some high price issues as well okay and if you say some more important thing here the sri lankan delegation and imf team they had fruitful technical discussions in this meet and these discussions they also talked about recent economic and financial developments and what are the some economic uh, economic reforms that need to get by sri lanka okay that will be helpful to restore macro economic stability in sri lanka so these are some areas of discussion so now let us try to see yesterday's questions and explanation part so first question is regarding volcanoes so first statement is more than 95 percentage of global volcanoes are along this plate boundaries especially we can see in the pacific ring of fire okay pacific ring of fire yes this statement is absolutely correct and high intensity volcanoes of vicious type and as well as pelian type yes and next one is low intensity volcanoes or mid atlantic ridge they are con uh, concentrated in divergent plates so whenever there is divergent plates that means the plate which are moving away from each other there we can see the intensity of volcano will be low so whenever there is a convergent plates or then there, there we can see the intensity of volcanoes will be high so here you have to identify the correct statement so all these are correct and the next question it is regarding different types of relief so first order relief we can see continental plates yes and next one is second order relief that will uh, that are mainly caused because of volcanoes and uh, earthquakes so that will lead to the formation of this folded mountains so second order will be the folded mountains and third order will be the plains and deltas so the correct option will be one only and now let us try to see today's questions today's questions are the first one it is regarding soil formation so weathering is a basic step uh, basic and the first step of soil formation so consider the following statements regarding weathering so there are three statements you are given so you have to identify these statements and you have to see which are the correct statements and the next question is regarding mass weathering mass wasting or mass moments so there are again two statements are given so please try to read these statements and give me the correct option so these are the today's questions so apart from this i want to make a small announcement so we came up with this mains answer writing practice in our rathore's is academy so in this uh, course we are giving you the detailed syllabus detailed timetable of one year so that you can cover gs1 gs2 gs3 and gs4 each and every topic within one year for sure if you are following our guidance and we will be giving you daily one question so we will be giving you model answer and there will be evaluation of your answer and as well as one to one mentorship so this course is absolutely beneficial the cost here is just 7200 rupees for one year so apart from that there are number of courses which we launched in our rathore science academy for example if you want to take complete history module you can take complete polity and governance 
and geography economy disaster management and as well as we have ethics so there are different subjects which are present and if you want to take entire foundation course you can take entire foundation course and we are ready to launch this pen drive course the pen drive course cost of this entire foundation course uh, course with two years of validity it is just 60000 rupees so if you have any doubts regarding any courses please call us on this number please make a note of this number 8074765513 and it's also whatsapp number you can message me on this number and if you want to get the pdf of this class you can join the telegram channel link is given in description box and now let us try to see today's hindu newspaper pdf and this is today's hindu date here is april 25th and this is delhi edition okay so now let us try to see the first topic it is regarding jammu and kashmir so days of misery over pm tells jammu and kashmir youth so our prime minister he said that kashmiri youth of today they would not suffer with the miseries that previous generation they already had gone through so our prime minister came up with inauguration of developmental projects okay and he said that these projects are mainly going to reduce reduce distance from delhi and he also came with some developmental projects some infrastructure in this areas and whatever the connectivity projects that we are coming up that will be very much helpful to end the distance between the delhi and we are also coming up with several road projects between the srinagar and delhi that already reduce the time travel that is about 2 hours and even in this jammu and kashmir they also came up with this solar power project so this will be helpful mainly to mitigate this climate change so these are some important things and regarding this all india household consumer survey that i discussed and if you move forward if you move forward in the city page there is nothing much important today and in this state page you can see one article that is guru gram residents clean up aravallis on earth day so you have to focus on what is this earth day and here what happened aravalli bachao citizens movement which mainly commemorated on this earth day in this forest hind scrutiny so they mainly came with this uh, uh, with this drive that is clean up drive you have to see this where is this aravalli is located on the map and you have to know whether this aravalli is a holy mountain or not and if you move forward you can see there is one article regarding this uh, learning that is uh, like a gap so still tracing children lost to the world of learning so because of this covid 19 so till now what happened students they attended online classes but this online class are not much efficient uh, and now once the schools had been reopened so there are many children they are facing this learning gap and let us let us try to uh, think about this uh, learning gap and here uh, please give me some suggestions regarding how can we address this learning gap now in the children and regarding this uh, debt crisis of sri lanka i discussed this topic and if you move forward in the editorial page i discuss regarding this india uk relations i discuss regarding the scholars in jammu and kashmir so there is one article that is not much relevant from upsc point of view but if you want to refer this you can refer this article regarding covid 19 mortality data and regarding this polio eradication i discuss this topic and if you see this data point this article which is mainly this data point which is mainly showing about covid 19 hotspots and again there is increasing of cases in india and in this text and context there is one article regarding this olga telis judgment so for your information i will be giving you what is this uh, olga telis uh, judgment so this olga telis versus bombay municipal corporation judgment in 1985 which mainly talking about the people who are mainly staying in this pavements uh, they are called as pavement dwellers and as well as slums so what happened whenever we want to go for clearing of this areas and when we want to send them out of this areas so it is unconstitutional it is mainly violating their right to livelihood so this is the thing which mainly said by this olga telis versus bombay municipal corporation judgment so now what happened this jahangiri puri uh, area which is mainly seen in uh, highly news and in this context you need to know about this olga telis judgment Okay, so in this Olga Telis judgment, it is a five-judge bench which mainly led by Chief Justice, that is Y. B. Chandrasekhar, 
and he mainly says that this pavement dullards they do occupy this public spaces it is unauthorized but whenever we want to go for uh, clearing them and we want to expel them it is like a violation of a right to livelihood so this case started in 1981 so when maharashtra state and bombay municipal corporation which mainly decided that this pavement and slum dwellers in bombay city they should be evicted and they deported to their respective places of origin or the places which are mainly outside the city of bombay and the court in this case which emphatically objected to authorize treating pavements and as well as the pavement dwellers as a mere trespassers so these people they managed to find a habitat in the places which are mostly filthy or marshy out of the sheer helplessness so it is not as if they have they are free to free choice to exercise as to whether to commit an encroachment and if so where so here this is about this topic and i discussed regarding this arunachal assam border dispute and if you move forward to this new speech this page number 10 here you can see ministry undp signed pact on sdgs that is sustainable developmental goals so there are 17 sustainable development goals you have to by heart them and this will become very much handy when you are writing any mains answer so here the ministry of panchayat raj and united nations development program they signed a joint statement and they are mainly focusing on understanding the localization of sustainable development goals so here you need to focus on the sustainable development goals and you have to by had that there is uh, no excuse for this and here you can see one more article that is anti defection law need to be reformed so this is the thing which mainly said by venkaya that is our vice president our vice president which mainly who mainly said that there is a need to amend this anti defection legislation in the country okay because there are some loop holes which are mainly present so there are certain loop holes in this anti defection law okay uh, so because of this we need to have some reforms in this anti defection law so you have to know about what is anti defection law and which schedule in our on constitution which mainly talks about this anti defection law so you have to know that and you can get the information regarding this anti defection law in our in our lakshmikant and if you move further Uh, there is one more article regarding this digital economy so go for a cashless day out to boost digital economy which is the thing which mainly said by our prime minister so our prime minister he mainly said that cashless day out every once in a in a while to benefit digital economy so when we want to benefit the digital, when we want to get the benefits from this digital economy we need to go for cashless day out so it will be helpful for the developing of digital economy and we can go for encouraging of atmosphere of honesty so this is something which mainly said and there is one more article that is nagas without borders spread the message of unity so you need to know about who are this nagas so what is this uh, nagas uh, nagas demands you have to know this and one more article here is india suspend tourist visas for this chinese so here what happened about 22000 of uh, indian sit indian students they are mainly getting education from this uh, chinese universities but now after once this covid 19 which entered into our lives so many of the students uh, almost all the students they mainly returned back to india from china and now china which is not allowing these students to attend the classes so this one of cause of concern to so because of this india which mainly took a retaliation step like india suspended tourist visa which mainly issued to uh, this chinese nationals okay so this is the thing which mainly said and actually this visa which is mainly having a validity of 10 years and this visa is now no longer they will be valid so this is the thing which mainly said and if you move forward there is world page in this uh, 14th page so there is nothing much which is much important here so you can know about nigerian oil refinery so where there was a blast happened and this blast about 80 people they killed okay so these are some important articles that appeared in this today's hindu newspaper i hope you enjoyed this lecture so please subscribe to rathors as academy and don't forget to like share and comment my videos and if you want to join any of these courses so please contact us on this number 8074765513 and you can register in our website rathors as academy and you can watch the demo videos there so by this i am concluding thank you so much